Hey, good morning. Uh, just heading out. Uh, heading out on a little bit of a road trip, not too far, about an hour away. Um, I went and looked at a dump truck yesterday, and uh, I, I'm going to go out and buy it. It was out in Rochester, which is about an hour and a half away. And uh, I, I looked at it, and there were some issues with it. Uh, the Well, all right, let's stop and slow this down. So I'm looking for a dump truck to replace my two-wheel drive dump truck. I want to put a plow on it so I can have it for a backup in the winter time in case I need it so it's not just sitting around like my two-wheel drive dump truck has been. So what I did is I looked for a four-wheel drive dump truck and I wanted something cheap, something that I can work on. Let me go fill up the fuel and I'll tell you the rest of the story in a minute. All right, while we're fueling up, I'll tell you the rest of the story. So I've been looking around for a dump truck, uh, four wheel drive, uh, preferably a Ford, because it's, I own Fords and whatever. Uh, and something with either a nine or eight foot box or a nine foot box and a regular cab. So I found a whole bunch of them. I mean, there's, there's a million of them out there. But one, one of them struck me because he kept going down on the price so I knew something was wrong with the truck uh, or that he was desperate so I called the guy up and uh, it turns out he uh, it turns out he bought another truck um, a nicer newer one more money than he thought he was going to spend on a vehicle so he was letting this one go um, cheaper at least that's the story I got so it's not a big deal so I went and took a look at the truck, and it's got its fair share of issues. The bed, the, the dump box has got some issues with it. Um, there's a lot of scale on it. It's been painted before. Somebody put like a textured paint on it, and it's real horrible. Um, there's a couple little rot holes in some areas, some flat channel and stuff that I can you know easily just plate and weld. Uh, but there was an issue with the front fenders of the truck. They're, they're kind of bowed out on the bottom. They're kind of pulled away from the doors. Uh, I, I mean, a good, you know, two inches. So I'm like, you know, it wasn't in the picture. I'm like, what's this all about? And he's like, well, when he, took it to the, when he took it to the tire shop, when they jacked it up, when they put it up on the lift, they put the lift under the wrong area, and it ended up pushing those supports and pushing those fenders out. So, but apparently the... The tire place that did it is paying for two new fenders and a paint job. I doubt the paint job is actually going to happen because it's a white pickup truck and they're going to get white fenders. I mean, I imagine they're going to get white fenders. So, um, and you, so I, I so I, so we came to an agreement on the price of the truck and I was all about it and everything was fine. So, but the stipulation was I needed to have something that said, you know, that it that. Um, something that that was him just texting me they're on their way uh i needed some paperwork from the tire place that's saying stating that they are going to take care of it uh signed by the owner and there is uh the guy that's selling me the truck got three estimates so from his local place so as long as one of my local places is is right in that ballpark they'll cover it uh if my local place is super super higher than that then i got to take care of the difference I don't know. I don't really know what's going to happen. I might just tear into this thing by myself and fix it myself. I, I really don't know. But um, so yeah, so we came to that agreement on the price. We went to that tire place, and the guy that was was there when the accident happened wasn't there. So the new guy that was behind the counter was basically just kind of giving us a run around, saying, "Hey, can't do anything with it. Blah blah blah. Whatever. You're on your own." So I pretty much left that meeting yesterday with the truck owner and said, hey, look, if you get something figured out with these guys, call me back. I'd be more than happy to meet you halfway and, uh, and pay the price that we decided, that we agreed on, and then we'll go from there. So I went home, drove another hour and a half home or whatever it was. I'm going to shut that off real quick. Uh, you're meeting the guy halfway, yeah. So I told him... You know, if you can get all that proof for me from the from the tire place, that I'll meet him halfway, and we'll and we'll do the agreed on price, and we'll go from there. So he called me last night and said that he went and got because he had one estimate. He went and got two other estimates from his local body shops, and they're all within you know they're all within a hundred or two hundred dollars of each other. So it's you know pretty basic. And then uh, 
And then he also went to the tire place when the guy that was there, uh, when the accident happened, uh, was on shift and he signed some paperwork saying that, that uh, they're, they're responsible for it, they'll pay for it. And there's a law in New York State that says if, if they have damage on the vehicle like that, they're required to pay for it and it, does, and it could be the body shop of your choosing within reason. So even though this happened in Rochester, I'm buying the truck and bringing it back here, I can have it fixed here and they're still paying for it, which is good. So I decided, yeah, okay, I'll meet you out there. So that's what we're doing today. I'm, I got a guy that's coming with me and we're gonna drive out to Batavia. Like I said, it's about 35, 45 minutes out to, out to the area that we're going to. Uh, make the transaction in the parking lot and then I'm, I'm taking the truck home. The good thing about it is it's staying uh, titled and insured through the owner today so we had an agreement where I'll take the truck back with me I'll turn in the place to the DMV and then I'll just send him a picture on my phone of scraping the registration sticker off the windshield so that he knows that he's not liable for anything else and he can go ahead and cancel his insurance and all that kind of crap so that was really cool so I'm, I'm kind of cool with that so we're gonna go out and grab it bring it home first thing I'm gonna do is uh, probably pull the pull the uh, put the bed up uh, knock all the scale rust off the off the underside of the bed and the frame and then I will go ahead and do some uh, uh, what do I gotta do I gotta do a little bit of welding there's a couple little patches that I gotta weld up on the um, on the uh, I-beam that runs underneath the uh, that runs underneath the bed I'm gonna do that a little bit there's a, a little you know a walnut size hole so I'm gonna go ahead and fix that then I'm going to pull the wheels off and get those cleaned up and repaint those. And then I'm going to tear out the inner fender wells and see what's going on with the back side of those fenders and see if it, see if I can't pull it. There's no crease in the fenders. That's the cool thing. There's no crease in them, but they are pushed away. So I'm wondering if, if possibly I can pull those fenders off because they're fairly decent shape. There's no rust on them and get them and straighten them out. And then I don't even have to deal with this collision shop bull crap at all because so uh i'm just waiting for for my passenger to get here and then we're gonna go take off and then uh once we get there if nobody cares i'll film it if if they do i'll catch you back here when we see the truck so talk to you in a bit all right so that turned out to be a little bit of a cluster no big deal though uh i mean no big deal for me because i just got another i just got another whole bunch of money taken off the truck the uh, the shop that did the damage to the truck, and I know this is a law in New York State that I can take it to any shop of my desire, you know, whatever, but the guy was adamant that, you know, they want it done at the shop down the street from their place. So I'm not cool with that. You know, I gotta drive out of here an hour and a half to, to drop off the truck to, uh, to have that done and then drive an hour and a half back home, drive an hour and a half back up to pick it up. So I said, screw it. I had the uh, guy knock another. I had a guy knock another whole bunch of money off the price of the truck. Got it taken care of, and now it's on the way home. I got Jordan behind me driving it. Um, so we'll get home, and I will do a little bit of a walk around on it before I start working on it. So I'll catch it back in a little bit. All right. Well, here's the truck. Just got home a little while ago. What's that guy want? Anyways, just got home a little while ago. It's an XL, so there's nothing special in the front end, but I have XLT headlights and uh, XLT grill, and uh, I'm going to get another bumper, so that'll be that'll be for another time. I don't really want to go around the side of the vehicle because the uh, previous owner's phone number is still on the door. So, but as you can see, see how that door looks like it's sticking out? The door is actually not sticking out. The fender is pushed in, and I'll show you. Underneath here, they put the lift on. They pushed on this, and it pushed this piece of metal pushed it in, drawing the drawing the fender in with it. Uh, the fender isn't doesn't have any uh, dents in it or anything like that. So I think once I pull the fender out and pull that back out, it should be fine. Same on the other side here. This side it pushed it out. So same thing, the, the lift got underneath here, right here, shoved up and pushed, pushed that out. So I'm going to pull the fenders off 
and work at those and get those taken care of. The bed I thought was was ruined. Uh, it has all these big, big, huge, scaly spots, and it turns out they hit this thing with like a like a bed liner, and wherever it was rusty underneath the bed liner, it just kind of got scaly and and you know bubbled it up. So I scraped a bunch of this off, and it's good metal underneath here. So there's little areas in here like this. I'm going to have to do a lot of scraping to get that off. And then I'm going to put the flapper disc on and grind these down smooth and see if I can't get them back to, you know, get them back to what they were and get some paint on them. Got some issues back here. This plate got bent. That shouldn't be too difficult. I'm going to heat it there and just grab a hold of this and turn it back. Um, it appears, this hook here, this, it doesn't look... It looks like it's been welded on and it's pushed in and on the other side it's completely gone it got torn off the truck so I have to make something that's gonna fit there and weld that on and like I said yeah this this is that area that I was talking about but this is just rust scale and underneath this is pretty pretty solid metal so once I scrape all this down and sand it off we should be in good shape uh, the chute door is tight but I'll get that to work back here I think I'm just gonna take a piece of steel plate and and just weld it along here right and then mount the trailer brake uh, the trailer plug on the outside of it and the license plate I'm gonna put you know in the middle where it should go so and then of course uh, heat that up and straighten that out that shouldn't be a big deal so then we'll take a look in the uh, hold the bed the bed's fine no holes in it anywhere um, less some of this crap in it, but whatever. Uh, interior's a little crusty. The seat's bad. But I was thinking about getting, um, a bench, or a, you know, a 60-40 seat. So I can have, uh, drop-down center console. And they have them online everywhere. So I'm thinking about getting one of those. The floor should clean up nicely. There's no rips or tears in it. Get that all cleaned up. It's a stripped-down truck, so it's just crank-out windows. I thought the doors were ruined, and here, here's a pretty nasty spot right there. But on the outside of the door, it's just got rust on it. hasn't It's it doesn't have any holes in it. So I think once I grind that down and hit it with some rust protectant, and maybe possibly just scab in a piece of sheet metal here to to get rid of that hole. But I don't think that that'll be necessary. Rockers are good. Everything's good there. And then I was just looking through my through my uh my stash and i got one of my one of my stereos from my from one of my older trucks that i put a uh, aftermarket radio in i think the first thing we're going to do is pull this radio out <laughs> look at this little fella One and <laughs> look at this little guy. That's all it was. And then, and then this is the other one, the new one. It fit right in the hole, and the same wiring harness plugs in and antenna. We're good to go. Let's get this on. Sorry, I got you on a magnet mount, and uh, not a lot of metal things going on in here. Okay, so the interior is really cruddy. Um, he didn't really take good care of it. I, you know, it's a work truck. They beat the crap out of it. There's coffee stains and junk all over the place. But I think this will get cleaned out nicely. There's no holes in the dash where old CBs were mounted or anything like that. It's got a brake controller here. I'm not sure if it works. We're going to plug into a trailer tomorrow and see if it works. Uh, the bed works great. And then once I lift this up, we'll go take a look under there and show you some of the other bad issues that it's got and what my plans are to repair them.
All right, I'm not gonna stand under there for too long because the safety kickstand here is seized on. So we're gonna have to get that figured out. Okay, so the bad. That channel right there is pretty rotten. It's got, oh shit, I can't see it from this side. It's got a couple of holes in it, but it is just, it's just a piece of C channel. And uh, I'll be able to cut that out of there and and put in a new one or at least you know portions of it from edge to edge whatever but i'll be able to get that fig i'll be able to get that figured out that's not gonna be a big deal the frame itself on the truck has got scale on it but it doesn't have any holes in it i think all that'll knock right off and be fine uh the big issue the big issue one of the reasons why the truck was so cheap is if you notice this spring shack uh, the spring is leaning this way and one of the u-bolts actually broke out of its mount i don't know if that was from the truck sliding into something and and whacked it or if that was just rotten and it finally poked through or what happened but this leaf spring is leaning this way and that one's leaning in this way also and it also has a broken one so first thing tomorrow i'm getting new um u-bolts and uh the brackets and everything <clears throat> i'm gonna jack up the uh, back of the truck here uh cut those out of there and put the axle back into where it's got to go and then mount the u-bolts um, back in uh, the new ones in there so that should take care of that um, it has a couple it's got two rough um, uh, cab corners so I'm gonna cut these out and weld in some new ones give me practice because I live in Buffalo everything gets rusty and all of our cab corners on all our trucks are getting rusty so I'll be able to get that fixed Plus, uh, it'll teach me a little bit on how to do that kind of stuff so that I can get practice for my next truck. <clears throat> but the bed works really easy. Um, my last one, my, my uh, 92 over there, has a uh, piece of bar that you pull up and down, and it's, it's really a pain to do. You need two hands, and you've got to position yourself in the truck just right to do it, but... Uh, I thought this was an 8-foot bed, but it's not. It's 9, so that's great. It's a little bit bigger than the one I had. That one's only 8-foot. This one's also about 6 inches, six or 8 inches wider, so I'm going to be able to hold a lot more material. Um, it only had one 2 by what is this, two by 10 going across here, so I th I'm probably just going to extend extend this up to about here and then put you know two 2 by 12s in there so that will have nice high sides for it. Uh, another issue that the truck has, oh, I already showed you this, this issue here. So we gotta, we got to get a piece of hunk of steel and really clean this up and get that welded in there. So this, because I can't open this as a tailgate because this will just, this will just drop right down unless it's got something to sit on. So I'll get something for in there and weld that on so that shouldn't be that big of a deal. The other issue I was having is these, the hooks here. So this one has got a good bend to it. No, well, I suppose they both do. But the, the problem that I'm having, and I don't know what to do about it. I think maybe it's probably an adjustment I can make. But when this is down all the way in the unlocked position, these aren't open far enough. So I can't, I can't get the bed out. Um, I put a pry bar in here and I was able to push them back a little bit so that tells me they need a little bit of lube But I don't know. I guess I guess we could take a look underneath it. Well, this is the So when I open that so is that going down all the way? Oh, you know what? This should be able to this should be able to push further push that let me get a hammer whack on that a few times to see if that opens it be right back all right that's all it is um i just whacked on this a few times with a hammer and it was able to get it to go more now it's 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 sticky so i'm gonna have to it's actually not sticky here i think it's sticky in this joint here and in that joint this joint down here um so I'm gonna have to spray this down with some lube and, and get it working right, but we'll get that figured out. Um, so today, 
I'm not doing anything. I'm going to, I put the radio in. That's all I'm doing for today. But tomorrow morning, we're going to get out here and really start working on it, get these leaf springs fixed, start knocking some scale off, seeing what we're into. So, see you tomorrow.